here's a fun little exercise you can go out there and do. Take a look at all the videos that we made on this channel about Jake DeBrusque. Go over the entire 2015 story in the Boston Bruins and how they had three consecutive picks in the teens, and they selected DeBrusque alongside of a few other guys that really have not developed as well as the guys that were taken after these players. You have yourselves Jacob Zaborl, Zach Sinitian, and Jake DeBrusque taken ahead of guys like Kyle Connor, Matt Barzal, Brock Besser, Thomas Shabbat, Oliver Shillington, the list goes on and on and on, and you can go out there and find many names that have outperformed these three Boston Bruins in a row, and it's not too difficult to go out there and find. The best one of the bunch was Jake DeBrusque, and we talked about in the previous DeBrusque videos that, yeah, this guy went out there, he asked for a trade, it's not looking good for him and the development that he has had with the Boston Bruins because he's not getting any playing time, he's getting played on the third line on the left wing, he's not developing, this and that. But take all that stuff that we said about development and how it's not really happening for DeBrusque in his perspective and apply it to the guy that was taken after him but also by the Boston Bruins, too. Because if you go over to Zachary Sinishin over here, the 15th overall pick and the third in the series of three Bruins in a row in 2015, word has come out that he has requested a trade as well. What a terrible look for the Boston Bruins and how things went down in 2015. We had already spoken about how the Jake DeBrusque situation was bad in terms of the optics, in terms of Sweeney and Neely and the way they went out there and drafted and developed these guys. Sure, the drafting decision itself was a pretty bad one in hindsight because of the good talent that was available after these three guys in Zaboral, DeBrusque, and Sinitian. But... This also was made even worse by the fact that all of these guys never really panned out in the way that you would have wanted them to. Sanishin and Zaboral are not NHL caliber players. Jake DeBrusque is an NHL caliber guy, but he just really hasn't developed into anything more than a middle six complementary depth scorer. And that sucks because he had a pretty good season a few years ago where he almost scored 30 goals. But now... Zachary Sanishin has come out here and requested a trade that makes it two out of three. In fact, we actually had word that Zaboral requested a trade in 2019-20 as well, so make that three for three. But at the current moment, two of the three guys are actively in the trading sphere, I guess you could say, because they both have requested a trade in the same span of time. Here's the article on rinksiderhodeisland.com. Sanishin asked the Bruins for a trade. Sinitian is looking for a fresh start. Through his agent, he has asked Boston for a trade. It's been a long journey with Boston and Providence. Obviously, I'm super thankful to everybody in Providence for the help and their development of my game, but I want to play in the NHL. I feel like I haven't been given that opportunity in the Bruins organization, Sinitian said by phone from Ottawa, where he is home for Christmas. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, if you go over to his NHL game log over here, you could see that he played eight games in the NHL in 2020-2021, four games in 2019-20, two games in 2018-19, and his overall body of work has consisted of a consistent Providence Bruins spot where he has not really improved, points per game-wise at least, in a significant capacity. Now, for a guy who was drafted 15th overall, you would expect to actually have a pretty solid linear development upwards, especially in a league like the AHL. But you take a look at his first season in the A, 26 points, 66 games played with the Providence Bruins. His second season saw him get 24 points in the same amount of games played. The next season after that, he had 16 points in 42 games. Then he sort of improved in 2020, 2021, 13 points, 18 games back then. But this season, he's got 13 points in 21 games. He actually passed through waivers for free, and nobody claimed him earlier on in this season. So, Zachary Sinitian has really not developed in the ways that most 15th overall picks, or let alone most teenager overall picks, that sounds really weird, most picks in the teens, let's say that instead, would expect to develop instead. 
So now the word has come out that Sinitian, even though he's thankful for his time in the Providence Bruins organization and the Boston Bruins, because don't forget, he does have himself a total of 14 NHL games played in three seasons, but he wants a fresh start. He wants to play in the NHL, and he has not been given that opportunity with the Bruins. I feel like my game has gotten to that level where I'm ready to play, and I'm ready to make an impact. With the way the Bruins organization has been going, it just doesn't seem like I'm in the mix. I just feel like I need a fresh start. With all of the backlash in the media, considering where I was drafted and everything going on there, it's just been a lot emotionally. I feel as though a fresh start is best. Senation, buddy, I'm going to go out there and say this right here. Nobody's going to go out there and blame you for being selected by the Boston Bruins 15th overall. You are not Matthew Barzal. You are not Brock Besser. You are not Thomas Shabbat. You're not Travis Konechny. You're not Ilya Samsonov, Colin White, Joel Eriksson Ek, or even Alex Debrinkat. And that's okay. That's not your fault, man. The ones who are getting upset at you personally for not being Matthew Barzal are the ones that are just super emotionally invested in the Boston Bruins, and the ones who really want to see this team pull off all the right moves because it's very apparent that even though, you know, they made the choice of getting you and Zaboral and DeBrusque 13th, 14th, and 15th, that it wasn't really the right decision. I mean, take a look at where Zachary Sinitian was supposed to be drafted to. Future Considerations had him at 42, ISS had him at 39, NHL Central Scouting had him at 38 for North American skaters, so that's not even the totality of the entire situation for NHL Central Scouting because they had him at 38 for only North American guys, not including European skaters. TSN Abba McKenzie had him at 40, so the fact that he was taken 50 15th, that's not your fault, man. That's the Boston Bruins going out there and trusting their own scouting staff over the consensus, and it didn't work. So, it's all good, buddy. Don't worry. I'm not really being utilized in the Boston organization. I'm not being used at all. I feel as though it's better to get them some return and for me to get a fresh start. I've developed a lot as a player from when I came into the NHL the first time. I feel like my game has grown a lot. I think we're just at that point where I'm 24 years old, about to be 25. If they don't want to use me as an asset now, there's only so much more I can do to try to fit into their fold. For me, it's come to the point where I can part ways and I can help another team that needs more help than the Bruins need, in my skill set at least. I feel I have a unique skill set where I'm a fast skater, I can play up and down in the lineup now thanks to the development I've had in the AHL. This is a long, long article now that I see it. I mean, I've been a guy who was in the playoff bubble in 2020, who has been a loyal soldier for a long time, time and time again. Guys have been put ahead of me, and those guys have been given the opportunity to develop and grow. If I was given some of those opportunities at the NHL level, maybe I would have been able to produce. Obviously, injuries plagued me when I was up there, but I still feel as though my game has always been there to be able to contribute and to at least be a positive effect on that group up there. It says here in the article that he will report to Providence after the holiday break and continue to work on his game. My biggest priority is getting my game to be the best it can be, and that's going to be by playing and being a good leader and teammate and doing all those things. It won't be by sitting at home. My focus is still on developing my game and helping my team, but I'm just at the point where I'm ready for that change. And, uh, it turns out his agent is actually the same guy, or the agent that he has is part of the same agency that represents Jake DeBrusque, who also has asked for a trade. I'll say this right here, Zachary Sinitian seems like a very well-spoken and very perceptive guy, especially based off of this interview right here. I very much appreciate the comments that he made to the media. It's just, having DeBrusque be the first of the three guys to go out and very publicly request a trade in this atmosphere, especially as the best of the three that were taken in 2015's first round, and then just a few weeks later having Sinitian request a trade as well, the optics for this are terrible for Boston. Like, this 2015 draft is looking worse and worse and worse as time goes on. And that's kind of saying something considering the perception of that draft and the three picks right when the draft happened. You see all the tweets, oh my goodness, the Boston Bruins, they could take Barzal and they could take Connor and Shabbat all at the same time. But they didn't do that. They selected DeBrusque, Zaboral, and Sinitian. And now you're seeing what happens when you take the guys that probably shouldn't have gone there and you develop them poorly too. 
So talk to me in the comments. What do you think about Zachary Sinishin going down there and requesting a trade? It's another L for the Boston Bruins. You hate to see it. Do you really hate to see it? I don't know. A lot of people don't like Boston, so I think they're kind of okay with this. But talk to me in the comments. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed this with your Ash Rolls and I and I. And bye.